Hi, my name is Delaney Wilson and I've got Max McGee and Clancy Williams here with me. And we did our senior design project on the San Diego Zoo Oryx Habitat Remediation. And through this project, we call ourselves W and W Engineering. So for the, um, our project is located in San Diego, California at the San Diego Zoo. Um, it's the Oryx Habitat, which is in the middle of the African animal section. And currently they're experiencing high velocity stormwater flows that are wreaking havoc in their habitat and causing a lot of animal hazards and not giving them the proper habitat that they um, would normally have. Here's what our presentation is going to uh, consist of today, and here's an overview. Um, we've got our existing project conditions and facilities. We've got our available and gathered data. We've got our design criteria and constraints. We have a summary of our pre preliminary design analysis and any economic evaluation uh, with that. We have our recommended alternative that we decided to go with, our technical evaluation and cost estimates for this project design. Um, any environmental or societal impacts and remedies that we um, have thought up to hopefully take care of all of those impacts that are negative, um, any required permitting we're going to need, and a sustainability evaluation for longevity of the design and our closing statements. So as you can see, there's the Oryx habitat in the um, top corner here of the picture you see on the right hand side. And as you can see, there's not very much vegetation and it's kind of that long. Um, rectangle. It's located in the northeast corner of the zoo and it's between two other habitats right in the middle of the African section as I had previously mentioned. Uh, the land slopes into the habitat so water converges right down the center of that habitat and it should flow through a 36 inch pipe that they have at the bottom but because of all the erosion that is completely clogged causing water to back up. There also as you can see from the picture there's severe vegetation loss. Um, the oryx tend to eat um, overeat and overgraze, so that has eroded a lot of the vegetation. And then the rest was um, eroded away with those uh, high storm water flows. And any old riprack or large boulders or rocks that they had in the exhibit um, created huge holes because it was scoured, um, the soil was scoured out around it, causing large um, cat like kind of openings and large rivet, like ravines for the animals to uh, potentially get hurt in and fall down in. So our available and gathered data, we got some designs and some water flow from uh, Atlas Civil Engineering, who was sponsoring us. The rest we did calculate ourselves. So the habitat size ha um, has two pens, that's 1.25 and 2.6 acres respectively. That large slope in the habitat has an elevation change of about 50 feet. And the soil that they had, they did a soil analysis and it consi uh, consists mainly of uh, silts and fine grain soils, which is why water is able to erode it away so quickly because it is so light and small. Um, the stormwater flow that they generally have in there is about between like 30 and 18 cumulative cubi cubic feet per second for both of those drains. Um, the peak flow rate that they have had through that area is 78 cubic feet per second. And that um, based on our calculations with the area of the pen, the water going into the habitat would be about 16 cubic feet per second, which is a pretty high amount of water coming through that habitat. Um, also with any unclogging drain stuff, we have to make sure to watch um, what we were putting into the storm drain. So the storm water pollution prevention plan um, kind of needs to be taken into consideration too, which they also made available to us. Now for our design criteria, obviously our primary user is the oryx animal. So every material we use, any vegetation we want to plant, it needs to be safe for them because this is their habitat that they need to thrive and remain healthy in. Um, the zoo asked that we um, design for a 50 year storm event because with such high water flows, we want to be able to hopefully accommodate and convey most of the water for really large events so that this design has longevity. Um, we have limited access to the habitat. There's one small access road, so we're not um, able to use much large equipment and plus that might cause some disturbances. Now the city of San Diego requires um, a grading plan as well that we have to really strictly follow. And we want to try not to trigger any environmental permits because with it being California, it's really difficult to obtain those. And our exhibit must be easily maintainable so that um, the employees are able to design and not and have it last as long as possible. 
So for some design constraints that we have, um, we need to do this as quickly as possible because as the orcs are moved out of their site, they're gonna get a little agitated and they aren't comfortable when they are not in their actual um, natural habitat for the zoo. Um, with that small road to access the habitat, our small equipment can only be used. So we have to make sure to do something quick enough because we cannot bring in large equipment to do things necessarily in large quantities. Um, with vegetation, we need to revegetate and make it low because that um, most closely mimics the oryx natural habitat in the wild and it must also be edible because they will eat anything no matter what. Now with the steep slope, I mean that is causing some difficulty with the increasing the speed of the flow of water coming into the habitat, but um, steep hillsides are very important to the oryx and that's a lot like their natural habitat. So we need to try and keep that steep hillside in some manner. And, but Overall, the animal's health and comfort is our primary constraint. Um, and now Clancy is going to talk about some of our design analysis for you. Yeah, so based on the criteria and the constraints, we came up with three design features for the habitat. Uh, a drainage feature within the habitat to convey stormwater out of the habitat. And that'll give ample conveyance to reduce flooding. And then two, the design of the habitat to withstand water in the future, um, designed to resist erosion while maintaining the preferred oryx habitat. And then the third is a feature design for water volume and flow mitigation, reducing the total volume of water flowing through the oryx exhibit. So based on those three design features, we came up with three alternatives for each feature. Uh, so for the drainage design alternative, we have vertical slot perforated drainage pipes above ground. And those will convey increasing volumes of water as levels rise in large events. And then our second alternative there is the ground level horizontal drainage pipes. Those will absorb water through perforations to be conveyed. And then the third are multiple smaller above ground drainage pipes, similar to the first option. Uh, and these would provide insurance for clogged pipes. And for the habit, habitat grounds alternatives, we have a single steady sloped hillside, which we found to be the most cost effective, or a stepped and tiered vegetated hillside. This we found would be the vet best at slowing water velocities. And then the third alternative there is a vegetated hillside, and that's with a single slope. This would absorb water better um, and re reduce velocity. And for the third design feature, our water volume mitigation, we have three alternatives. A design channel along the fence line of the habitat, which would convey water that would otherwise enter the exhibit. And then the second is design smaller channels through the habitat. Uh, this would be aesthetic, but more, more cost effective, excuse me, more costly. And then the third would be a berm above the exhibit to convey and absorb water. Uh, WMW recommends the implementation of the vertical slot perforated pipe above ground, a tiered and vegetated hillside, and designated channels along the exhibit perimeter. So a summary of the recommended alternative, we have the single slot above ground drainage pipe we found this to be the cheapest and easiest to implement. Uh, there are some existing facilities on the grounds that would help us out there. And then we have the tiered and vegetated slopes, which we found to be a balance of cost and performance uh, and aesthetics. We believe that this is the best option there. Then the concrete channel around the exhibit would be low expense and reduce water that travels through the habitat without disrupting the habitat design. As a total design, our selected design features account for cost, feasibility, effectiveness, appearance, and sustainability for the oryx. 
So here's our economic analysis uh, of our chosen suggested design. We have here on the left, construction cost analysis, and then on the right, our engineering costs, giving us a total estimated final cost of $199,593.59. All right, so with a project of this magnitude, there are bound to be environmental and societal impacts. And we decided to categorize those into short-term and long-term in order to analyze them. Uh, for the environmental short-term impacts, there'll be erosional control issues with, with potential rain during construction, which will be up to the contractor to control. Um, the short-term air quality control, there'll be Sorry, um, there will be concerns about air quality control during construction, which will be handled by wetting down the exposed soils so that less dust enters the air. And there's a potential for fluid spills as well, which is bound to happen at any construction site. Uh, at, from a societal short-term standpoint, there could be potentially unhappy patrons at the zoo as nobody likes to be around construction and some patrons may be wanting to see the orcs and not being able to. Uh, there also might be worries regarding the oryx during construction as they don't like to leave their habitat and they tend to get agitated and anxious. But overall, there's pretty minimal social impact in the short term. As for the long term, there will be permanent erosion control measures implemented with our design rather than temporary ones. Uh, the, the design is completely safe for the oryx. There's no scoured holes due to riprap where the oryx could fall in and break their ankles or anything. And it'll be suitable for easy maintenance to improve the longevity of the project design. And as for societal long term, uh, the oryx well-being will skyrocket after having a brand new fully vegetated habitat for them to explore. Um, there'll be more zoo patrons because more people will want to go to the zoo to see the new exhibit. And overall be good publicity for the San Diego Zoological Society as well, showing that they care about all their animals and take these issues very seriously. As for the required permitting of this design, uh, we met with our project sponsor and determined that the less permits required, the better, as then we could streamline the construction process. And taking that into account, we were able to streamline our design to require only the City of San Diego grading permit, which we qualify for because of the area being larger than one acre. Our slope, some of our uh, tiered slopes are steeper than 25% and the slope vertical is taller than five feet. Uh, but with how the work is designed, we shouldn't need any other environmental permits, which will help to streamline the process. As for the sustainability of this project, it's a monetarily efficient design as the San Diego Zoo is a not-for-profit organization. So keeping costs as low as possible while achieving all goals was a need. Uh, there's long-term sustainability in our design because it accounts for long-term usability from the Oryx, not just the next year or so, but the next decade. Um, and there's minim it, it'll be sustainable long-term because we're minimizing the erosional impact in multiple ways and not just one way. Uh, we condition the landscape in a sustainable way by um, having the steps and the tiers slow down the velocity of the water to reduce erosion. And the vegetation not only provides food for the orcs, but also helps to slow the erosional impact. And maintenance is easily performed to imp also improve the longevity of the project. Uh, responsible construction methods will be used by the contractor, as well as best management practices to ensure that the project construction is environmentally, socially, and economically sustainable and the longevity of the project improves the sustainability of our design by properly conveying stormwater within the exhibit while rerouting stormwater that falls above the exhibit that will produce the probability of an erosional event that caused the damage that is currently being that has currently happened. In closing, uh, even though we are working with the San Diego Zoological Society, the Oryx are the primary user and all the design and our design accounts for that and every step of the way we made each decision with the Oryx in mind. Uh, is a holistic design that accounts for the past, present, and future with the past design and where it had failed, the present issues that have caused the erosional damage, and the future of preventing those same issues. And it's an economically friendly design that achieves all the desired outcomes that the San Diego Zoo wanted with this remediation. There are our references. And thank you. And if you guys have any questions, please email us at the below emails. Thank you. Thank you.